Dubai, a shimmering oasis of new wealth, where skyscrapers practically grow out of the sand and Lamborghinis purr through the streets like feral cats in a sun-soaked alley. Indeed, you can call Dubai what you want, the new money capital of the world, the modern El Dorado, a multi-millionaire's playground, but one thing's for sure. Dubai's reputation for fast and furious opulence is a red flag for many in the world's old money elite. For them, Dubai's flaunting of riches and unabashed commercialism is like serving Dom Perignon in a plastic cup at the Ascot races. Utterly horrifying. And it's not that old money families despise their wealth. Quite the opposite. They simply find Dubai's approach to it as crass as a Vegas bachelorette party. Thus, in today's episode of Old Money Luxury, Buckle up as we take you through a Mercedes-Benz cab ride through the fraught relationship between the creme de la creme of old money affluence and the Gulf's glittering hub of nouveau riche as we describe why old money families hate Dubai. When examining why old money families harbor reservations about Dubai, it's probably best that we start with the human element. In the world of sustained wealth and relationship capital, old money suggests more than just financial abundance. It implies a complex matrix of long-established relationships and alliances cultivated over numerous generations. Take, for instance, the Roosevelt and Kennedy families. Joseph P. Kennedy, the elder statesman of the Kennedy family, shared a multifaceted long-term bond with President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Both were Democratic Party stalwarts, with Kennedy even serving as the inaugural chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission at Roosevelt's behest. Later, he became the US ambassador to the United Kingdom. Though politically fruitful, their love-hate relationship also showcased the sort of entrenched social and political ties that old money families invest in. These ties aren't merely transactional. They form the foundation for alliances and strategic give-and-takes that endure through successive generations. Similarly, the Astor family matriarch, colloquially known as Mrs. Astor, was an iconic figure in the social circles of Gilded Age New York. Her contemporary counterpoint, Alva Vanderbilt, was also a formidable society doyen, masterminding her daughter Consuelo's matrimonial union with British nobility. While adversaries both women moved in overlapping spheres of influence, their interactions and rivalries providing a glimpse into how these families negotiate social dynamics, often influencing societal ethos and conventions. Thus, such families highly value the investment in human relationships and allegiances that span generations. Dubai presents a stark contrast to this. Known for attracting new money and a fluctuating populace, the city grapples with nurturing such deeply ingrained social networks. Indeed, Dubai's demographic fabric is inherently transient, with a sizable chunk comprising expats. This makes it nearly impossible to forge the lasting alliances treasured by old money dynasties. For example, Dubai boasts a residence of almost 68,000 millionaires and ranks 23rd globally for ultra-affluent inhabitants. A staggering 88.52% of its population consists of foreign nationals, and native Emiratis make up just 11.48%. Furthermore, many of those residing in Dubai are short-term inhabitants, sometimes present only for a day or two for tax or legal formalities before returning to their primary homes. Virtually everyone in Dubai has roots elsewhere, causing a lack of stable social ecology and making it a difficult terrain for families accustomed to more constant and centuries-spanning social landscapes. Moreover, in cities dominated by old money, relationships aren't casual friendships, but calculated alliances, intricately woven into the fabric of business, politics, and societal betterment. Ancestry and family heritage are pivotal. They serve as keys to unlock opportunities and confer an irreplaceable layer of social respectability. Exclusive clubs and societies are the norm, with memberships often passed down through generations. Such long-term social fixtures are glaringly absent in a city like Dubai, where the majority of wealthy residents are relatively new to affluence and time-honored institutions have yet to take root. Indeed, it's common in iconic old money hubs. Think Boston, London, Paris, Tokyo, or even tech-focused San Francisco, for lineage members to frequent the same elite educational institutions. For example, concerning the Rockefellers, DuPonts, and Morgans, one finds recurring patterns of shared educational backgrounds. As a case in point, David Rockefeller was a Harvard alumnus, as were several DuPont family members like Irene DuPont. The Morgans, 
represented by the likes of J.P. Morgan Jr., also share this Harvard connection. These shared educational journeys offer more than cultural commonalities. They forge lifelong affiliations beneficial in myriad ways. If I were to ask you the question, what is the Harvard of Dubai? Your silence also would say enough. Thus, despite modern universities facing understandable criticisms, they remain elite breeding grounds for old money youth and are thus integral to sustaining old money culture. Additionally, cultural institutions are pillars in the lives of old money families. They are frequent patrons of venerable arts organizations and often fund historical educational entities. In New York, the Metropolitan Museum of Art and Carnegie Hall are frequented by old money philanthropists, while in Boston, the Museum of Fine Arts and the Boston Symphony Orchestra are staples. London's old money circles often intersect at the Royal Opera House or the Tate Gallery, as well as the secretive members-only clubs of our lovely capital. Dubai struggles to develop these sort of long-term cultural meeting places, for, as we've already mentioned, the populace remains transient and often suffering from shiny new object syndrome. But it's not just the social circles or the absence thereof that make old money families steer clear of Dubai. The very nature of business ventures and economic frameworks also plays a decisive role. Shifting gears, let's delve into the investment philosophies embraced by old money families. These families adopt a conservative investment approach, gravitating toward assets that promise long-term stability rather than quick speculative gains. Their preferences usually include bonds, blue-chip stocks, and precious commodities like gold and silver. For instance, the Rockefeller dynasty has largely preserved its wealth through judicious investments in such stable assets ensuring their financial standing for generations to come. Dubai's economy presents a marked difference. It thrives on speculative high-risk sectors such as mega-project luxury real estate, tourism, cryptocurrency, and its reputation as a tax haven. While these industries often do yield fast and substantial returns, they lack the long-term stability that old money families prioritize. Real estate in Dubai is characteristically unstable frequently influenced by global economic trends, attributes typically shunned by conservative investors. For instance, the stalled mega-project known as The World serves as a cautionary tale. Unveiled in May 2003, this grandiose venture aimed to create an archipelago of 300 man-made islands off Dubai's coast. Construction commenced in the same year, but was abruptly halted in 2008 due to the global financial meltdown and the subsequent crash of Dubai's property market. The financial repercussions for investors were significant, and the venture has since been labelled as one of Dubai's most imprudent undertakings by certain media outlets. On the contrary, a distinctive trait of old money investment is their tendency to invest in land and historic estates. Take Britain's Grosvenor family as an apt example. Their immense wealth is closely tied to prime real estate holdings in upscale neighbourhoods in London. Another cornerstone of old money investment strategy is the planning for generational wealth and cultural transfer, usually rooted in a particular geographical location. Assets like the Kennedy compound in Hyannisport exemplify this. This historic estate has been a part of the family's holdings for generations, is an integral part of their inheritance strategy, and indeed serves as a socio-cultural headquarters for their political empire. Furthermore, the choice of financial advisors further illuminates the gulf between old money families and the typical investor base in Dubai. Old money families have enduring relationships with financial experts who are intimately acquainted with their unique investment profiles and long-term goals. Dubai, conversely, tends to offer more generalized financial counsel, aimed at a broad investor demographic and lacking the specialized advice suited to managing and preserving multi-generational wealth. However, where you go to school and what house you live in are only the tips of the iceberg when it comes to the differences between new money Dubai and old money locales. Certainly, behavior differences also play a part. Now, even when living in tax havens, old money families display a distinct predilection for locales abundant in history and culture. These clans are often drawn to cities replete with artistic legacies, venerable landmarks, and time-honored institutions. Take, for instance, Monaco, an effervescent echo of old money, and yet also known as a quite flashy place that has historically been known as a legendary tax haven, epitomized by landmarks like the Monte Carlo Casino. While undoubtedly a social nexus for the world's flashy elite as well, 
The casino's historical significance is deeply rooted. It reflects Monaco's aristocratic past and serves as a gathering place for those with generational wealth, offering a setting that harmonizes with their own long-standing family legacies. Such an environment naturally makes cities like Paris, New York or Boston more attractive to them than Dubai, which they may perceive as deficient in historical and cultural substance. In contrast, New money families, those recently coming into affluence, are often magnetized by the ultra-modern allure and frenetic tempo Dubai exudes. The city has burgeoned as an international epicenter for avant-garde luxury, leisure and enterprise. For individuals intrigued by up-to-the-minute amenities and pioneering experiences, Dubai's towering skyscrapers, opulent shopping precincts and state-of-the-art facilities are captivating. And now, Perhaps the most important point of our discussion, for old money, modesty and discretion, are their lifestyle's watchwords. Unlike the brazen, eye-catching ostentation that is the norm in Dubai, these families prize quiet elegance and nuance. The objective isn't to parade one's fortune, but to sustain a reputation meticulously curated across ages. They cherish the principle of continuity, bridging their present circumstances with a storied past. This is reflected not just in choice of locale, but also in their financial comportment. Exorbitant showcases of affluence, commonplace in Dubai, might be deemed by old money as lacking in sophistication or even uncouth. Such a flashy set of behaviors indeed would make the old money cohort positively cringe, as the kids like to say. Furthermore, privacy is a paramount concern for old money families, and this plays a significant role in their lifestyle choices, including where they choose to live. Often, these families opt for locations where they can maintain a low profile, away from prying eyes. It's not just about avoiding media scrutiny, it's about preserving a sense of dignity and personal space that allows them to conduct their affairs with discretion. Dubai, contrastingly, is a city that thrives on public life. Its social scene is replete with high-profile events, celebrity sightings, and public displays of opulence. Luxury cars, grandiose residences, and lavish parties are part and parcel of daily life. While this atmosphere may suit those who enjoy the limelight, it is less compatible with the old money ethos, which places a premium on privacy and restraint. Another aspect that illuminates this is Dubai's approach to security and surveillance. While the city is lauded for its low crime rates and general safety, this comes at the cost of extensive data collection and security measures. Cameras are ubiquitous, and there is a high level of monitoring, which, although effective in maintaining public order, can be invasive. For families who highly value their privacy, this level of surveillance may be a deterrent. Finally, the role of the media cannot be overlooked. Old money families often seek locations where the press is less intrusive, allowing them to live their lives away from the public eye. The constant glare of media attention is incompatible with their preference for a more discreet lifestyle, making places that offer a respite from such scrutiny more appealing. Thus, while Dubai may be a magnet for new wealth, its public nature and various other factors make it less attractive to those who have long placed a high value on privacy. However, we would be dishonest if we were to deny that Dubai may just need time to develop many of the aspects of a city that would make it desirable to old money clientele. Let's now discuss the future a bit and see what we can pull out. Indeed, up to this point, Dubai has been a hotspot for international investment and luxury living, but its ostentatious culture may not align well with the understated style of old money families. However, this could change. Dubai's ongoing efforts to diversify its economy, coupled with increased focus on art, culture and sustainability, could make it more attractive to this demographic. It's conceivable that if Dubai were to invest more in sectors that offer discrete wealth preservation, like specialized private banking or eco-friendly initiatives, it could catch the eye of old money investors. Additionally, as the more Anglo-Saxon styles of wealth allocation and behavior, such as privacy and understated backdoor dealings, start to lose some of their global influence, the new old money class may be more open to Dubai's more money-first, discretion-second approach. Certainly, even without a certain sect of the old money class's blessing, Dubai has been growing by leaps and bounds over the last 20 to 30 years, and I can tell you for a fact that anyone who has made their first nine figures in the last 10 years or so has been to Dubai at least once. Technological advances are also a significant factor affecting old money lifestyle choices. 
from AI-powered home management systems to blockchain for secure and transparent financial transactions, technology is reshaping the way wealth is managed and lived with. These advances could influence where old money chooses to reside, perhaps even making smart cities like Dubai more appealing. Ultimately, the ability of old money to adapt will depend on how well they can integrate new economic landscapes and technological innovations into their existing paradigms. And now we'd like to see you in the comments. Have you been to Dubai or would like to visit? And if you have, what did you think of it? We'd love to hear your personal experiences. And as always, thanks again for your continued viewership here at Old Money Luxury. Cheers. Until next time.